Dollywood. I took my kids to Dollywood and I'm um, getting blown up everywhere. You're trending Australia. You're banned from Australia. Your visa's being banned. Do you want to comment? I mean, literally, it was unbelievable. And the easy answer was no. I was with my kids at Dollywood, man. I was with my toddlers and nothing could have been more important. And uh, But I'm going to comment on that today because the headline, this is from news.com. Uh, Tony Burke blocks visa for far-right U.S. influencer Candace Owens. He is the immigration minister, by the way, over in Australia. And I also want to make it clear to you guys that I found out at the same time that the press found out. So his office chose to leak this. This is supposed to be a private application process. So unless I spoke about this, no one should have known about this. But they chose to leak this, which I think is absolutely stunning. I, I, but listen, like I, I've been kind of stunned throughout this entire process, obviously, because Tony Burke, before we had even applied for a visa, said that if she applies, we're going to reject it. And I just am very interested in the process, I guess, uh, just what goes on in this country, which is supposed to be, uh, I supposed to be a free country, I assume, but I guess, I guess the immigration minister can unilaterally make these sorts of decisions. Uh, listen, I want to be careful here because I don't, I actually don't want to stoop to his level. I want to kind of take the approach of speaking about what's actually going on here because it's quite, it's quite serious. It is quite serious when you have a person who says that the reason that I am not allowed to travel to Australia, never been in trouble in my entire life. I have traveled to, I mean, I was literally in Tokyo to what, two weeks ago. I've traveled all over the world. I mean, literally just all over the world from, from China to Tokyo to everywhere, Hungary to Croatia, to Italy, to France. I mean, you name it down to South America. I've been there and I've just never been in trouble. And yet the reason that he gave to the public was because I had the capacity to incite discord in almost every direction. The quotation he gave back in November was from downplaying the impact of the Holocaust with comments about Mengele through to claims that Muslims started slavery. Candace Owens has the capacity to incite discord in almost every direction. OK, so, of course, that's just not true. And, and one of the things that's really remarkable is when you see people writing these articles about things that they that I allegedly said, they all keep saying the ADL says she said this. So they're talking about a, a Zionist organization that says that she said this. I guess none of them can fact check that themselves. Uh, they just want to give an excuse to the public that this was somehow done legitimately. And of course, there is not a single, they can't produce, they cannot produce a clip of me talking about Joseph Mengele because it doesn't exist. They, they literally cannot produce a clip of that. I have no idea how it is that you are alleging that I am like both anti-Muslim and anti-Semitic. Again, all of this is to just make a statement to try to present me as some very scary person uh, akin to Adolf Hitler. And we've seen this before, okay? We've seen this before. I always talk about the Hitler hoax. When you get to the point where people start saying or trying to make you believe that there is someone out there that supports Adolf Hitler, like they got on a stage and they got up and they were like, Joseph Mengele is great and Hitler's great, you know that you are dealing with someone who is intentionally lying. And a perfect example of that, a perfect example of that was when I debated Rabbi Shmuley and he recycled the Hitler talking point, which the ADL has recycled for years, saying that I once got up on a stage and I supported Adolf Hitler. And Piers Morgan slapped it down in, in one of the most beautiful manners that I've ever seen live on TV. Take a listen. I want to jog your memory on that. And when, when she said in 2018 that she has no issue with Hitler because it, if he was a nationalist, but then he wanted to go beyond her borders, even then we didn't call her an anti-Semite. That's an absurd thing to say that you had no issue with Hitler. Hitler, even domestically by then, had enacted all the Nuremberg laws. There was already the November 9th, 1938 pogrom. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. What, what, and she okay. said she, wait, wait. Just to clarify, let's take these one at a time. What, <laughs> what do you believe she said about Adolf Hitler in the... Clip you're talking about. She said that there was no issue with Hitler except for the fact that he went beyond his borders. If he was okay, a well, nationalist, that would clip. have been enough. His let domestic, me play the clip. His domestic. No, but, I, but even that, no, but my point is no, no, no one called her. My in point the interest is no one... of fairness, I'm going to play the clip so that viewers who've never heard it can hear what actually got said. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned. Um, by uh, elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted he had 
dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not, to me, that's not nationalism. Um, so I, in thinking about how we could go bad down the line, I don't really, I don't really have an issue with nationalism. I really don't. I think that it's okay. It's important to retain your, your country's identity and to make sure um, that what's happening here, which I think is incredibly worrisome in terms of the, just the, the decrease in the birth rate that we're seeing um, in the UK, is what you kind of want to avoid. So I'm not, I don't have anything problem. I have no problems with nationalism. It's globalism that I try to avoid. So Candice, on that specific point, would you say that Rabbi Smuley has categorized it correctly or not? He's just openly lying, and, I'm, and that's why he didn't want you to play the clip. I'm, I was in the UK, by the way. I was at the Royal Mobile Club. There were Jewish journalists in the room, and nothing was written about it until months later when somebody was working on a hit piece about me. Uh, I was answering a question when they were saying, how can we just embrace the word nationalism when it sort of has this dirty feel? And I was just essentially saying that I actually don't have an issue with nationalism. I think it's totally fine to be a British nationalist, to be an American nationalist, and the problem is that it's wrongly attributed that word, I think people instantly associate it with Adolf Hitler. And I would argue that he wasn't actually a nationalist because obviously he invaded Poland and he went beyond German borders. I didn't even mention Jewish people. I didn't mention the Holocaust. And suddenly you have people like Rabbi Shmuley who are pretending that I got up there and I defended Adolf Hitler memory on that clip is because it's really important to see how these lies are formed in the media. And I know, and I trust my audience, uh, they know better than to think that I would ever be on a platform like saying Joseph Mengele or Hitler was great. But I routinely see this as the strategy. And you have Rabbi Shmuley up there, who is a representative of, you know, Zionist cause. The amount of times that he lies and he, these lies are then backed by the ADL and other groups and journalists will circulate these lies, which is essentially taking me out of context to make it seem as though I was like committing this great evil. And it just begs the question, if you are on the side of righteousness, if you truly are speaking about someone who is evil, why is a lie required? Why is it, why is it necessary for you to continually take people out of context? And if I truly did say that, then you would probably rest assured that if I showed up into Australia, people wouldn't be attending my shows. They wouldn't be attending my shows. People would actually be legitimately outraged because the majority of people, the overwhelming majority of people, would never go out and truly support someone who says, yes, Hitler, Adolf Hitler was just an amazing person. And so when I'm reading through the reasons listed and nothing said is true, like they're, 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 he cannot produce the clip about Joseph Mengele, as I said, because it doesn't exist. He just says, I, ADL said she said it. Rabbi Shmuley says she said it. Therefore, she must have actually said this. What you are seeing really take shape is that people don't want me to get in front of an audience. Uh, they, and the audience understands what the reason is. We all know what actually happened in Australia. Uh, what happened in Australia is really kind of has been in the story, the story of this year, me and this year, which is that I am not comfortable with the amount of death that is taking place in Palestine. And the Zionist media empire is very powerful all around the world. And they essentially say, if you do not kowtow or at least stay mum, so you either got to be out there and, and pretending that you don't see all of the Palestinian children that are being blown up and killed on your ex feeds, you can choose silence or you can choose support. But you cannot just be reasonable and say, I'm not OK or comfortable with that amount of death. And that's where I'm at. Um, I've made my bed. I've chosen to lie in it. Uh, OK, Candace, you're going to lose your job. OK, check. I accept that. I accept that because to me, I'm not going to remove my, my humanity for money. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me as a Christian. And so the next consequence is we want to make her feel isolated. We want to make her feel that she is alone, that she's not allowed to go out. She's not allowed to travel now unless she uh, supports or shuts up about what's happening to these innocent children in Gaza, that this is like the next step. Oh, we're, we'll take away your YouTube channel. They did that. You know, the, the Zionist group or whatever it was called on X said, let's lead the charge and mass report and get her demonetized on YouTube. I said, okay. I accept that because once again, I'm not a person who can be bought for money. I said what I said, and I said it 10 toes down. I am not comfortable with the amount of death that is in Gaza. That's it, okay? That, that is the reason that the Zionist Federation of Australia has come after me. That is the reason why they have, are putting together a list of things that I never said to try to convince the public that what, what is being done to me is righteous in some way. And so I just wanted to fully express to you 
to every person that's listening that I have not changed my opinion. There is no amount of money that you can take from me, no job that you can strip from me, no threats, no made up quotes that you can say about me that is going to change my mind about the things that I am seeing. And I wish I could show you the things that I am seeing, but YouTube has all sorts of policies which essentially say that they would consider it too bloody or too gory. And I can't show you what's happening to these children, but I, I can show you some that don't have blood. So here is a, a clip of one child talking about how her feet are bleeding from so much walking. Take a listen. I have seen children starving. I have seen children with their limbs missing. I have seen more children crying than I would ever care to see. Here's another child crying in fear as he carries his own baby brother while fleeing a bombardment. Take a listen. And here is an 11 year old Palestinian girl uh, crying, saying that she just wants her legs back after they have been um, blown up. Take a listen. So the determined punishment for me for not turning a blind eye to this, for not being a coward and pretending that I just don't see it, the determined punishment has been harassment, has been I'm going to take away your money and I'm going to ruin your reputation and I'm going to have journalists that are Zionists try to essentially assassinate your character online. I have accepted that because I think that is a way easier punishment to accept than what these children are accepting on a daily basis. You cannot tell me that what took place on October 7th makes the stuff that I am, have been watching for now over a year on my ex feed okay. It doesn't make it okay, okay? This is, to me, basic humanity. And like I said, I have made my bed, I have laid down in that bed, and I find it to be quite comfortable. I find it to be the correct thing for me to do, is to side with humanity, to hear those children screaming, and to accept my punishment that I may not make it to the Sydney Zoo. So Candace, you may not be able to hold a koala at the Sydney Zoo. That's my punishment. If that's what Tony Burke feels that he wants to dole out onto me, I fully accept it. But I will never be a person that will kowtow to money. I know that I can't worship both. I am not a castrated Christian. I am just a Christian. And I know that any person, country, group, or lobby that can do this stuff in broad daylight and have the entire media back them up and harass the people who have a humane response to that, I know that that's a great risk to my children's future. Because what if that group decides that America is the enemy? What if it's my children that are losing their legs and crying? What if it's my children that are holding one another after their parents have been killed? I choose to speak up on it. So I just wanted to make sure that every person knows that despite me being uh, fired, demonetized, spoken ill about, I haven't changed my position. And not only that, but the bigger deal, and this is why they do these sort of petty acts of vandalism, which is what this really is, a petty act of vandalism, no one's worried about me coming to Australia, is because they're angry that they've put this narrative out about me and my listeners haven't accepted it. They're angry that despite everything they have done to destroy my character and to beat down my will, that I'm still happy, that I'm still smiling, and that I'm still at the top of the Spotify charts. So you may be rejecting me for siding with humanity, but my listeners reject you. They reject your narrative. They know that you're lying about me. And I'm proud of them, and I'm proud of me. And that's all I'm going to say about that. 
Does anyone else remember event 201 just before an election, Bill Gates, the World Economic Forum, and